and welcome to my YouTube channel Nelly Decoder. And today's lecture we're going to be talking about reacting to events on the use query. So basically until now we have seen that use query was basically getting called automatically without any user interaction or something like that. What happens if you want to call the use query basically or call the ABA on some user events like click. So before we dive into the lectures, please make sure you watch the previous lecture on the React query in order to follow along. Let's just dive into the lecture. So from the previous lecture, we have created this small app where we had these three tabs. That is basically the home post and the user. And when I click on the post, I'm getting all of the posts basically over here that basically we are getting from the JSON placeholder API. And when I click on the read more of the of the post, then we are getting the comments over here and also the post details. So this is basically the basic overview of the application that we are using. But what happens now if we want to make use of, for example, um, when I'm on the home page, for example, or even I'm on the users page, and I have a button over here, for example, a small button, when I click that button, and then the API is fetched, not that when I, uh, you know, redirect to this user component or the post component, and it is triggering the use query, and it's calling the API, it's getting the data from the API. Let's just go to the VS code, and let's say that um, we, have on the, we have some users uh, on the user component, and we also have some API endpoint over here, if you go to the JSON placeholder, then uh, you, we have the endpoint for the users. We are getting 10 users over here. We have different informations for the user. And I'll just make use of this endpoint and we'll get the users in here. Over here, I'll just create uh, a simple button. And yeah, and but before that, I'll have just have to wrap it in a parent component like this. And I'll just put these in here. And I'll just call it uh, get users users list, and on click, for example, um, I'll uh, I'll listen to a function on click. But for now, I'll just pass it an empty handler over here. We're not calling this function or something like that. But before going there, we'll create a hook just like we did before, and we will name it use. Um, get users and in here I'll just make the same thing so I'll just simply uh, create another variable and we will access the use query over here and I'll call it for example users and as a second argument I'll pass it this function and I'll call it axios dot get okay and in the endpoint, I'll pass uh, the path from this API. I'll just copy it and I'll just paste it here. Just for the sake of formatting, I'll just make it a little bit look nicer. And also I'll add another space. And in here, we'll be passing some parameters. But you can see that we have now called to this git function and also, um, we will return response and response.data since it's axios. We have this configuration object. For now, we can get rid of the configuration object. And in here, I can just get the object as it is like this. So I can name it anything I want. And I can simply return this object over here. So in order to call it within this users component, I can just simply do like this. I can destructure it basically, and um, I can call it, and I can do something like this. It's loading, so I'll have access to all of the properties that I want to make access to. Just destructure the is loading, and I'll also want to have access to the data. Basically, basically that's the users, and I want to print if is loading then I want to return a loading component a loader basically and otherwise I just want to console log the user data or instead of doing the console log I can also do something like this that within this uh, I can print out the code like this and I'll just print it as a JSON something like this so it will work as well. So once I save it, 
I'll just go to my React application and now you can see that we have access to all of the users who are here. But this is fetched before even I was on this page. So I can go to the home. I'll refresh the page. I don't want it to be put in the style. And you can see that now it's, uh, it's getting the data. Uh, without my interaction now what i want to happen is basically uh, i want to refresh this data on the user click actually so uh, how i can do that so in the configuration as a third parameter you can, um, as i mentioned before that we can pass the configuration object over here and i'll just pass it enabled false which means that um this API shouldn't be called or this use query hook should not be calling the API automatically. It should wait for some event to occur. So it is now disabled. So we can no longer get the data from this API. When I refresh the page, you can see that uh, we don't have anything over here. We just have this button. It doesn't look like a button, but I'll just add some styling to it since it's a button. But since I'm using the tailwind, so it's overriding the styles. Uh, so I'll add just some classes over here and I'll add some border over here and now it looks like a button a little bit i'll also add some padding over here so padding x should be two and padding y should be one let's just make it four just make it a little bit bigger and then we can see that like that and when i inspect it you can see that we're not making any call to the to the api any of the apis you can see that we don't have any call to any of the apis and uh, i'll just clean this tab for now so what i want to do is actually when i click this button uh, it should make the call to the api and i should uh, see the list of the, the users over here so uh, in order to do that i uh, just have to add the handler over here from the use query hook we are getting another function that we call refetch and I'll just have to get this one and instead of uh, passing empty thing over here, returning an empty string over here, I can just pass this function and I can just call it. When I save this, um, you can see that we don't have anything over here, but still I'll just refresh it and I'll just clean the, the, the network tab over here. So when I click this button, I should be getting the user data uh, as a JSON over here. So yeah. When I click it, you can see that the API call is made to this API, to the user's endpoint. And now we are seeing all of this data. So this is how we can uh, control the use query and uh, yeah, we can refresh the database on some event that we want to. So this is basically all about controlling the use query hook based on your events. And I hope you have learned something new in this video. Please like and share the video, subscribe to the channel, and make sure to press the bell icon for future updates. And until then, I'll see you in the next lecture.